Auditioning for anything is a humiliating experience. I've prostrated myself for radio and television, public service announcements, and instructional videos. If any of you have tried it, I commend you and extend my condolences. There is something existentially confusing about being asked to pretend to be something you are not, only to be told you didn't do it well enough. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Can you try with a little more energy? Maybe like you just had a triple shot of espresso? Sure, absolutely no problem, I love coffee. Okay. Now, as if you are a little distracted, like, maybe you're trying to figure out if you left the iron on? Sure. Okay. Now, a little aloof. <laughs> if you insist. There's also usually an awkward moment when the folks conducting the audition start talking about you in the third person as if you are an abstract concept and not a person, they'll say something like, she doesn't look like she owned a poodle, does she? Do we need to get a stronger looking dog? Or, she's kind of not pretty enough to be the wife. Can we switch and have her read for the friend? Casting calls are outside the realm of polite society. They are live action Twitter comments and you are voluntarily at the mercy of this audience. You are selling your face, your smile, your hair, height, perceived age, all for a price you agreed to in advance. Minus 15%. <laughs> to call it selling yourself sounds harsh, but at least it's an honest transaction. It's also usually mildly too severely weird. Once I was at a casting for a voiceover commercial. We recorded numerous versions in various styles to appease an indecisive client who wasn't present, but would be reviewing my disembodied voice, along with a few other contenders for a seasonal radio spot. The job would have been a decent tour. It paid in the low four figures, and if the spot performed well enough, I could have received an extra paycheck with no additional effort. I stood alone in a small, too warm, padded room wearing stiff, oversized earphones as I began what felt like take number 2,654. Butterball brings you the joys of turkey day. <laughs> Friends and family drop in to bask in the warmth of the season. Celebrate this summer with Butterball Turkey on the grill. Tender, juicy, surprisingly simple. Happy Thanks Grilling from Butterball. <laughs> The skinny producer wearing 90s acid wash denim <laughs> wrinkled his nose as I finished. Okay. <laughs> this time, brighter. Like Thanksgiving is your favorite holiday and you were rushing off to the store, you know, like maybe to buy cranberries. <laughs> <laughs> you can't move a lot in the booth because of the microphone, but I leaned forward on my tiptoes and imagined being a little giddy as I said, Butterball brings you the joys of turkey day. Okay. This time, like you're feeling sentimental. <laughs> Thanksgiving reminds you of your dad, who died. <laughs> and he was always the one who carved the turkey. He won't be there this Thanksgiving, uh, but he'll be there soon. <laughs> Put a little heaviness into my voice, a little smile, because my dad, who died, who would have wanted us to have friends and family bask in the warmth in the warmth of the season. Okay, now like you're laughing. Nope. Trying not to laugh because your kid is dressed like a turkey and he's showing you his damn boots. But you're talking on the phone, so you can't crack up. 
Yeah, got it though. So, <laughs> stifling a laugh and maybe giving off a little <laughs> knowing chuckle <laughs> because we're going to celebrate this summer <laughs> with butterball turkey on the grill. <laughs> yes. I think the client would also like some options to appeal to a diverse audience. Say more. <laughs> One of the spots will be geared toward more of a black, I'm an African American. <laughs> oh. Great. So maybe a little regional dialect to warm things up. Happy face grilling from Butterball. The producer grunts is sucking air through yellow teeth. I am not just made. This is what they pay you for. Making the sometimes unrealistic ideas in their heads their reality. Can you maybe give us a take with a little more character? Uh. Character? You know, you don't have to pronounce everything so precisely. <laughs> maybe think about how you say it to a group of black, I mean, African Americans. <laughs> <laughs> it does not. <laughs> but this is the early 2000s, at least 10 years before Cheerios got in trouble for portraying a mixed race family as normal during a Super Bowl ad. It was a time when it was trendy for black people to bust out a rap in commercials while eating cereal, ordering fast food value meals, and playing with toys. Okay, maybe you will. <laughs> Butterball versus <Bert's> Rabbit. <laughs> Butterball brings it. No. <laughs> but damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but more precisely, how does a black woman who's actually a black woman <laughs> say butterball in a way that is convincingly black for two not black people staring expectantly from behind soundproof glass? <laughs> it is a soul bruising affront to be judged inadequately used. I mean, pretending to be something I'm not, a doctor, a small business owner, a mother of two, a lacrosse coach, that's acting. <laughs> pretending to be a black woman and failing. <laughs> <laughs> this is more than an existential crisis, it is vexation at its finest. <laughs> where it is financially advantageous to be more black. <laughs> resumes by candidates suspected to be black are routinely judged as inferior to resumes with the exact same credentials by candidates assumed to be white. Homes occupied by black families have been professionally assessed as less valuable than the exact same homes occupied by a decoy white family. Hosting exists for this very reason. The term usually refers to camouflaging blackness. It is very basic black wizardry. It manifests in ways that are shocking, skin bleaching, cosmetic surgery, and minute language. Like using the generic endearment buddy instead of brother. It's saying, you make a very fine point instead of I fucked with that. <laughs> Although for reasons that are very debatable, there is in fact a detectable nuance and resonance to the cadence of most African American speakers. You can probably hear it even in my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Studies found that listeners 
could reliably identify the race of black speakers, regardless of dialect, with 85% accuracy in less than 10 seconds. If listeners heard one second, a single word, they could still detect the race of African Americans two out of three times. So with odds like that, my musing about how to blackly intone the word butterball <laughs> were not necessary. I do wonder if my life would be different if I sounded like a producer expected a black woman to sound full time. Because sounding black in America is not benign, like sounding Canadian. <laughs> in those studies I mentioned earlier, once participants identified a voice as black, they were asked to describe how they thought that person would look and behave based on the sound of their voice. Not surprisingly, a rich black male baritone was stereotyped as having bolder black features and demeanor. Tall, muscular, broad nose, full lips, tightly coiled hair, abundant melanization, and probably large gold chains. <laughs> a friend of mine had that kind of rich black male voice. He surely would have ranked in the 90th percentile on the black scale. <laughs> I heard him before I ever saw him. It was at a co-worker's house party, and he was an invitee I didn't know. My back was turned when his silky bass tones vibrated against the canals of my ear like a low, whispered growl. I thought, surely, a young James Earl Jones had snuck into the room. <laughs> I was mid-sentence when I turned around to locate the brother who owned that cool voice. But I didn't see him. I must have frowned, because whoever I was talking to asked what was wrong. I shook it off. Then a few seconds later, I heard that voice again. And I was not shy. I turned 180 degrees this time. He must have said <laughs> be sitting down or standing behind that white guy in the lavender polo shirt. <laughs> then I realized the voice belonged to the white guy. I chuckled. He must have grown up in a black neighborhood. <laughs> and went back to my conversation. Mystery solved. Later, I learned his name was Nathan and that Nathan sounds black. Because Nathan is black. <laughs> His dad is black. Blackity black black, as Nathan would say. His mom is white. And inherited genes are a funny game of roulette. <laughs> Nathan embraces his black identity, but he did not look obviously or even subtly African American. He looks like your average white guy. But in a recording booth? <laughs> No one would have ever asked, no one would have ever challenged him to try a little harder to prove his blackness, even though his appearance would have surprised them. I thought about rehearsing a black voice for voice auditions. Same way sound. We all do. It's the distinctive cadence of smooth and fast with a hint of shuffling and sidewalk. <laughs> and truth be told, Hmm. Maybe I could have put a little honey into my voice and dropped an octave to give them a taste of the flavor they were after. <laughs> but would that have been enough? <laughs> or did they want? Watch out! This turkey is showing good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did not want to fuck around and find out. <laughs> <laughs> I never tested a black voice at auditions because my version of a black voice is currently coming out of my mouth. Yes. <laughs> Using race to categorize humans is fairly new. It began in the 16th century. For obvious reasons, it became a shorthand for prejudice. Black Americans are part of the most imitated culture in the world. 
but we are also among the most taken home. Readily and effortlessly celebrated as a Black actor, musician, athlete, or fashion icon, but known as a Black scientist, university president, astronomer, or billionaire CEO. At its core, code switching is the don't ask, don't tell of race relations, allowing Black people greater access and acceptance if we meet certain expectations. The guys in the recording booth were breaking the first hog. They were asking me to switch back, just for a little while, to what they suspected was my real speaking voice. They were surely unconvinced that a neck roll was not part of my normal speaking voice. <laughs> and I'll admit, I do sound different in a room full of black people. Different phrases, different intonation. If I was only talking to the black people in the audience today, this story would be different. Not very different. Not unrecognizable. But different. However, given the demographics of this room, Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to trust me on that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> as you probably guessed, I wasn't cast in the Butterball commercial <laughs> or any voiceover commercial that ever required me to sound like someone who looked like me. I was cast in television commercials in which I appeared to be a black female who looked like the owner of a coffee shop, <laughs> a pediatric nurse, or a person who cares about saving money on her auto insurance. <laughs> Sometimes these were non-speaking roles, which obviously worked in my favor. <laughs> Although I never succeeded at sounding like a black woman for voice auditions, to be black in America is to be keenly aware of double standards. Double standards that the population misquoting Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would insist do not exist. <laughs> Race is much more than skin color. For black people, it is generally defined by a set of shared cultural experiences, not all of our own choosing. This requires us to have a flirting awareness of a number of inside jokes and cultural references to rhythmic slapping. Big Luther versus Skinny Luther. Oh. <laughs> Who made the potato salad? <laughs> Janet Jackson's character on Good Time, and a raging debate about whether you season your grits with sugar or salt. <laughs> salt and butter is the only acceptable answer for the last one. Thank you. <laughs> <That's too weak. laughs> <laughs> there is no one way to be black. Nothing holds true for all. We are tall and short, wealthy and destitute, light and dark, conservative and liberals, Jewish and Mormons, artists and astronomers, rock climbers and knitters. And we each Say butterball in our own <laughs> <mouth and head. laughs>